precise balance between excitation and inhibition is critical for healthy brain function. When this balance is disrupted, it is thought to lead to various neuropsychiatric conditions. But in the healthy brain, this balance is actually routinely disrupted during learning and memory formation. For example, if you learn to associate an apple with a cucumber, then as a consequence of simple Hebbian learning, the strength of excitatory connections that lie between these two cell assemblies that represent apple and cucumber will increase. This will then lead to an increase in characterization of these two cell assemblies, such that when you see apple, some of the neurons that represent cucumber will fire, and when you see cucumber, some of the neurons that represent apple will fire. So with each new association, more excitation is introduced into the network, yet this doesn't result in uncontrolled excitatory activity. The brain must be employing a mechanism that allows balance to be restored. It's been suggested that inhibitory plasticity may play a critical role. The idea being that when excitatory connections are strengthened during memory formation, inhibitory connections are also strengthened after a short time delay to form inhibitory replicas of memories which we describe as anti-memories. In this study, we show the first evidence for these inhibitory replicas of memories in the human brain. Since they act to quench cortical activity, we show their effect by reducing cortical inhibition to unmask otherwise silent cortical memories. You can see a simulation of our approach in this neural network model. If we activate the red cell assembly and plot the firing rate of each neuron in the network, you can see that after an association is introduced between the red and the green cell assemblies, we see coactivation but this coactivation disappears after inhibitory plasticity restores stability. The effect of these new inhibitory connections can be revealed if we reduce the efficacy of all inhibition throughout the network. Now, when we stimulate the red cell assembly, the green cell assembly is once again coactive. To show this in the human brain, our principal challenge was to access signatures of cellular and synaptic activity using the coarse tools that are currently available for measuring human brain activity. First, to measure the coactivation between associated cell assemblies, we used fMRI repetition suppression, which relies on the phenomenon that neurons show a reduced response to repeated presentation of stimuli to which they are sensitive. For example, repeated presentation of the apple stimulus gives a suppression effect in the cell assembly that represents apple. Similarly, a suppression effect is also observed if apple is presented immediately after cucumber but not when apple is observed immediately after lemon. By providing a measure for representational overlap, this cross-stimulus suppression between associated stimuli can therefore be used as an index for associative memories. Using this approach, we found that we can measure associative memories in a number of different cortical regions immediately after learning. For example, when participants associated coloured shapes, we observed cross-stimulus suppression across an extensive region of visual cortex. But when they associated rotationally invariant grey shapes, we observed cross-stimulus suppression in anterior lateral occipital complex, which has previously been shown to represent rotationally invariant features. We then asked whether we could find evidence for these so-called anti-memories. We tracked the expression of associative memories over time and found that they became silent, consistent with the idea that antimemories emerged to silence cortical expression. But to show evidence for antimemories, we needed to reduce cortical inhibition. To temporarily reduce cortical GABA, we applied anode or transcranial direct current stimulation, TDCS, to the region of cortex known to store the cortical memory. We then measured the change in cortical GABA induced by the brain stimulation using ultra-high field MR spectroscopy. Consistent with a number of previous studies, we found a significant decrease in the concentration of cortical GABA with application of brain stimulation. Finally, we asked whether this reduction in GABA changed the expression of cortical memories. Using cross-stimulus suppression to reassess the representational overlap between two previously associated stimuli, we found that when GABA was reduced, the cortical associations were re-expressed. Importantly, the degree to which cortical memories were re-expressed could be predicted by the change in GABA. This data shows that in the human brain, memories are stored in balanced excitatory and inhibitory ensembles. This allows cortical balance to be maintained for healthy brain function despite learning and memory formation.